again. I bet you can't tell. Folks are getting cold and rainy. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. The seed wheat bin is right here with uh, that variety in it. So I just ran a little bit of uncleaned wheat. I mean, it just uh, bin run wheat is what we would call it. Uh, you know, it straight out of the combine into this bin and now we'll drill it and um, it won't be treated with anything. It has some tracked seeds, some chaff in it, but we'll just bump the seed rate up a little bit. A bunch of chances of rain. Small chances, but chances nevertheless. Oh, we got a few soakers. I would be lobbying to drill some uh, cover some areas that uh, are more erodible. Hopefully everything goes well today and we get the, all the wheat done. Okay, uh, drilling my wheat here, setting your wheat. Got the fall replacement heifers eating on the waterway and the milo stocks next to me here. Driving to get the fertilizer semi, but I stopped in our uh, forage blend that we're gonna put the cows on. And uh, most years it's mostly sedan grass and millet. At least the last couple years we've tried it. We've only, we haven't been doing it that long. But this year, thanks to the chinch bugs and the drought, you can actually see there's still some chinch bugs in that plant. It basically killed the uh, so it's it hasn't produced as well. But now with this late rain, I'm hoping these radishes and turnips, you know, they're going to have more room to produce. You can see there, there's a lot more of them than we've had the last couple years. And it's not because the seeding rate was any different. It was just because of the way the environment worked out. It also froze hard enough that that kind of burned the leaves. This was pretty late drilled stuff. Hoping we get some good grazing off of the the radishes so it'll be exciting to watch that and we've noticed that other years after a freeze you know all the grasses die and the, the radishes and turnips keep going cows will move here next month probably okay so i found this uh, key in the dirt i think that the cows must have tried to start this uh vanguard engine and uh water themselves although they weren't out of water you guys don't have opposable thumbs you can't use these Anyways, I'm gonna pump some in here tonight anyway. Just to top it off, the calves, calves can, they can't reach, reach that water when it's that low, so. Here they come. After a nice night of drilling, I stopped by to water the cows and calves. The hose has sucked this tank dry, and that tank still needs to drain in here, so. Okay, feed my last pen. Got my field done. Got the cows watered. Nathan fed the first load, and I'm feeding the second load. And we're getting them done here. Okay, Dad's grinding hay. He's got the double fork on the front. We're gonna hook on to this back one. I get where I can move three bales at a time instead of just two. There's pins on there that'll slide into each one of these. So, put in them pins. One on each side. And you'll see how he can raise that three-point hitch up. That's how he's gonna raise and lower the bale. Okay, I'm back here with the sidekick checking fence. They're not even open to this paddock, um, but the deer have come through and they took off the top insulator in two places over there by those bales. And then they took off this insulator. So I just put a uh, new one on here. The fence, the fence was down to 1.7. And that was because it was touching the metal on the post that it had knocked the, in, the deer had knocked the insulator off of. So I put a couple of new insulators back on and I'm hoping it stays up over five volts now. 
right, there goes Nathan out to harvest some of the last fields of fall harvest. We're going to do some uh, double crop soybeans today. I am uh, drilling wheat. Today's Monday. Uh, this is our last wheat field, and there's chances of rain for like seven of the next eight days. I'm trying to get finished up here with, with planting wheat and with um, fall harvest. Uh, we're going to get pretty close, I think, and you know, we're thankful for the chances of rain for sure. Uh, there's even, I think, a chance of snow this Saturday, which is kind of crazy for October here in Kansas. Okay, Nathan helped me sort for a little while. Uh, we sorted pen six, deer and heifer. Uh, now I'm running these steers from pen five in with the steers from that group uh, to consolidate a pen, make it instead of two smaller pens, one bigger pen. It's almost entirely steers. It was all steers when we bought it. My dad slipped in a couple heifers. Uh, and so he told me to watch out for them. So I'm, I'm going to try to stop them heifers from going in to pen 10 uh, whenever I get them over there close. I got a sorting gate to try to stop them with, but I think there's less than three in this pen of 60. Hey, dad bought another fence charger. This is the first time I've ever had one of that brand, Parmac. We've got a couple from TSC. We've got a speed right, two speed rights. But uh, we, we've needed another one because we got people, we got cattle grazing a lot of places. These are some irrigated double crop beans. We had a really early freeze in early October, and so they weren't done yet. It's really going to hurt the yield. Pretty short, but double crop beans are almost always pretty short. The duck feet are really helping us get them onto the belt, keep the cutter bar cleaned off and feeding in real nice. For short beans are the, the number one thing we, we were interested in these duck feet for. Double crop beans today. Not much of a view. Every once in a while you get to see the other combine when the dust clears. Yes, there's supposed to be a view in front of me. for the tractor going in, fuel for the wheat going in. Okay, we are baling. Bruce came out, helped me with some settings on the baler, ways to make it work the best it can in corn stalks. So obviously I've made quite a few bales. I think I'm at 115 so far. I think this is the last baling we will do of the year. We had that small fourth cutting of alfalfa and now this. Uh, which is actually for my uncle on a neighbor's field. We're right here along the interstate here. But anyways, this is probably the last action this baler and tractor rig is going to get before uh, the M7 goes on the feed, feed wagon. Okay, the unique thing about this is we're doing this field round and round, so in a circle. And uh, so my, I'm not driving straight rows here. Okay, Greg came with reinforcements of more net wrap. Because uh, I'm empty here and I'm already half gone on the next one. A lot of net wraps for this field needed. All right, so I'm over here bailing. Our friend, Uncle Bruce, asked him to come over. Magnus is over there. And then our neighbor who runs the dairy over there is drilling wheat. At least I think it's wheat. So three tractors in a little half mile area here. Okay, so it dings. Uh, beeps at me and it starts wrapping. Counts up there to four. I'm going to kick. Drop back down. It doesn't take long. I've only been filming for 24 seconds. And I'm off again. Okay, I finished uh, in 
plenty of time for daylight, but then I talked to Magnus for a long time. He's over there doing the last like a row or two. He said he had like a few spots he wanted to clean up. So we decided to get this 25 acres right next to the feed lot drilled to wheat, but we didn't have time to get the cows locked off of it, so we'll see if they get in my way or not. Hopefully tomorrow we'll either get them stuck over there. The problem is they're walking across this field to get water because none of the ponds have water in it. We'll see what we do, but it's kind of funny to be drilling with cows right walking in front of me. It is time for the last crop of Harvest 2023. I've got about a 13 acre patch of sunflowers in my field here that I kind of did for agritourism. And Brighton and I are going to go harvest that field of sunflowers this afternoon. Uh, had to go get the row head. Um, it was on this kind of funky looking header trailer we have at my dad's house. So we had to bring that over here. Uh, we got it all rigged up. Hopefully it's ready to go. What do you think, Brighton? Are you ready to harvest some sunflowers? Can you say sunflowers? So the difference between a row head and a corn head is that there are knives on the bottom of a row head um, that cut it off and then there are belts that bring the crop in. It's not, it doesn't kind of pick it off like the corn head does. So it's a little different. Um, you can modify a corn head to become a row head, um, but these row heads were built I don't know, it's probably 20, 30 years old. I'm not even sure they make them anymore. Um, but they were very popular here in central Kansas, um, originally for their ability to harvest uh, Milo that's fallen down. And that's what we own this row head for, is, is for when Milo falls down. However, uh, we were able to just use our Draper heads this year to pick the, the fallen Milo up, which um, it wasn't necessarily ideal, uh, but it worked. And um, it was a lot faster than trying to use a smaller row head but for 13 acres of sunflowers uh this row head is is ideal for the job so got it out of the shed and we're gonna see if it still works it hasn't been used for two years this is my first time growing sunflowers in two years you ready to cut some sunflowers <gasps> all right got the uh got the row head going you can see the belts that bring in the sunflowers and uh and then there's knives underneath there. All right, we are rolling. Sunflowers are kind of ugly at harvest. Not exactly the prettiest looking crop when they're ready to cut. I had to uh, pull this snoot up. It wasn't working right. So that's why it's sticking up in the air like that. You can see behind me the sunflowers going in the bin. They are black, black gold, Brighton. So some of the, the main questions people have about sunflowers are, first of all, what are they used for? These sunflowers will be used for oil. I'm gonna take them to the local co-op here uh, in Lindsburg. They'll be transferred to another facility, probably Goodland, uh, where they are crushed and then used for sunflower oil. So there's a lot of food products that you might see at the grocery store um, that will have sunflower oil in them. And then sometimes I'll take these to Hutchinson. Um, you can get a little bit of a premium on them, like when I have a little more acres. This year I only have 13 acres. Um, you can get a little more of a premium on them for uh, bird seed. So that's another uh, way sunflowers are used is bird seed. And then of course there's the you know the sunflowers that you chew um, that go directly to to food for humans. Um, but those are called confectionery sunflowers. So those are a little different than these oil sunflowers that we're harvesting here. These sunflowers were planted with a, a normal planter, um, just like you plant corn or milo or, or any other crop. And they are harvested with a combine, just like you'd harvest, you know, any other crop with a combine. Uh, it goes through the machine, seeds are separated from the rest of the plant, and uh, that's what you get. It's the black sunflower seeds, just like you would, uh, you know, see in a bag of sunflower. One of the problems we have with sunflowers is because, um, you know, they're very desirable for bird seed, we have trouble with the birds coming and, and eating them before we get them harvested. But this year, uh, they were ripe in, in plenty of time. So we are, are getting them off before the birds can 
eat them. As far as the yield goes, um, not great. Just like a lot of our crops, pretty small little heads. As you can see there, uh, just wasn't enough rain. Even for a, a pretty drought tolerant crop like sunflowers, there just wasn't enough rain to, to really make them, make them grow really good. So another disappointing yield, but uh, they are they are pretty good for the for the soil. They the roots go way down deep and and kind of open things up. And in a no-till system, that's kind of a good way to break up compaction and and uh, kind of get that root down in the ground. So these seeds, it's kind of hard to tell, but they're pretty small compared to normal. And, uh, you know, that's because of the drought, similar to like the soybeans, which are so tiny. We've got some bugs in here. They're sunflower seeds, just like you'd see in a bag of sunflower seeds you chew, but um, they are oil seeds. So these are um, designed for oil production, sunflower oil. And uh, I'm not sure on the yield, um we'll see once once i take it to town and it's been weighed i'm guessing somewhere in the thousand thousand pounds per acre range which isn't terrible for double crop sunflowers especially on a dry year compared to our other double crops i would say this definitely ranks higher than double crop beans our double crop beans were terrible this year because of how hot it got in august and september um, our double crop Milo was definitely the best option for double crop this year. Overall, probably made money, especially when you add uh, the tourism side of it into things. People pay pay five bucks to come take a picture in these sunflowers. So um, once you add that in, pretty decent profit per acre for 13 acres. And uh, I like growing sunflowers. It's kind of a hassle. My brother Nathan doesn't like it because it is a hassle, but. Uh, it really looks good when they're blooming. You know, they're kind of fun to harvest, kind of different. Something that's unique, especially to Kansas. Kansas is the sunflower state. Hope you guys enjoyed learning about the process of harvesting sunflowers. Well, we were cutting some double crop soybeans and it started drizzling rain. We came back to the shop. I had Henley with me. Are you helping out? <laughs> yeah, you're silly. I haven't been able to get uh, as much fan speed as we should be able to and so i suspected this belt was getting worn it doesn't look that bad you know it doesn't really have cracks on on the outside but when you hold it up to the new belt it's probably an eighth of an inch narrower which is why we're not able to get enough speed so i had ordered it and it it was working but Gonna get it on here. We'll need the air for a week next year, so. It's supposed to be rainy for like a week. They don't call for that much rain, just rainy and cloudy. Okay, getting the grain car back. It's kind of starting to rain, like this is the heaviest it's rained all day. Gonna get this grain car put in the shed. It's raining! It's a good morning where it's raining. Well, this is the hardest rain we've had in probably a year and a half. Rain is hard. There's water. There's water running in the ditches. It's the most water I've seen running in the ditches since June of 22. Thanks for watching everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.